everyone welcome to the standby salam alaikum to you all today we hope to bring healing we hope to bring hope we hope to bring some renewal of faith that it is possible for it to work it is possible for you to be married and happy it is possible for you to have it all together nothing is perfect in this world but it can be very good. My name is Ohineiwe Gifty Auntie. Welcome to the standpoint. I'd like to say thank you to GTP for my cloth. This dress is by Chick by Siba. Siba did it for me. Thank you so much to Siba. My hair by Shukula Hair. You can find her on all social media platforms. That's Twitter, Instagram, what have you. Thank you to Papa Cosmetics who provide the makeup product for us. And today, my makeup was um, beautifully done by my young daughter called Amtu. <laughs> oh, you can call her mommy. She applied the makeup for us. But makeup and more, I mean, applied the makeup for my panelists and the studio audience. So thank you to all of them. Our topic for discussion today is understanding marriage in Islam. We'll be back. <laughs> Hello, I'm Amma and I'm a W Young Professional. My name is Benedessa, I'm a W in business. Hi, I'm AC and I'm proud to represent the W and family. I have access to the best sources of inspiration, an outstanding mentor, career workshops and more. I am connected to a panel of professional advisors. I even got a new business partner through a W seminar. Being a working mother is amazing and W empowers us with special lifestyle offers, an early saver for the kids and bank assurance protection for the whole family. Sign on to W at any Access Bank branch near you. Get inspired. Get connected. Get empowered. W. Inspiring. Connecting. Empowering. I am best my power. Tinate tomac mixture. Who will be only us and you for every being yasem. Sana tinate malakian also. Etu malaria, tipaye, stress, and who nam yao bias. Fraser two zero eight one six zero eight zero seven and a zero two seven six eight seven five six two nine. Tinate tinio. Ayo pusian chamfa. Limbo. Hey. Hi. Ah. One time. Maybe I for dinner. L E A P. Leap tomato paste. Four. What else? Honey. When you say leap tomato paste, you are idiot. It's so bias. Never. Don't say hi. Hmm, madam. The food tastes very good. What's the secret? L E A P. Leap. Yeah. Leap tomato paste. Emma, I do need that, Papa. Leap. <laughs> For bulk purchase, contact 050-140-1088. The things you do for me, nobody. It's a new beginning and a new dawn. The standpoint, eight years of impacting women and society by the grace of God. The Muslim Women's Conference on the 16th of July at the forecourt of GDA Studios, 9 a.m. prompt under the theme, The Muslim Woman, Promoting Peace and Development. The speakers are Hajia Alima Mahama, former Minister, Women and Children Affairs, and former MP, Nalerugu Gambaga, Hajia Saada Meida, Commissioner at the Electoral Commission of Ghana, Hajia Ramat Muslim, former National President, Ahmadiyya Muslim Women's Association. Come deliberate with Muslim women and men across the country. Sponsored by supported by media partners the standpoint at eight woman arise and shine your new dawn is here to the stand for remember this program is also aired on abn tv on sky channel 235 which is across western europe parts of canada asia and north africa um, so today we want to discuss understanding we want to understand marriage in islam you remember some few weeks ago actually i think on the 20th of may we did um air a program on 
not now parents. And we talked about the fact that parents don't have to force their young girls to go into marriage early. And we had a young lady in the audience who shared her experience that touched all of us. Seated right opposite me is a beautiful young lady. She's a student, um, a proud mother of a beautiful girl. <laughs> I wanted you to smile. You want to smile, I love. Yes, I know that. She's Sadia Ahmed, and she's a student. Welcome back to the standpoint. Thank you so much. The last time you were there, <laughs> now you're here. Good to have you on the standpoint. Thank you. Next to her, I have Sheikh Arimi Al Shaibu. He is the spokesperson of the National Chief Imam, and um, he's also the Chief Executive Officer of Zakat and um, Sadaka Fund. Welcome back to the standpoint. Next to Sheikh is my big sister, I haven't seen in so many years now. She is uh, Hajia Arukaya Idris um, from the Anisa Foundation. Welcome to the standpoint. Thank you, Gift. Sadia. Yes, now all together. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. Have you been able to speak to your daughter since then? No. Still? Yes. So what, what do you want to do? Um, right now, I'm still fighting for her. That's all I can say here because I've put up measures on how to get her. Mm. Those people I know, they've been going to his house. Now he has stopped all of them from going to the house simply because they'll link up information in connection to her to me. Mm. So they don't go to them no more. How so, old is your daughter now? She's, she'll be six in November, hopefully. She'll be six in November. Yeah. And um, she was taken away when she was two. Yes. Uh, how do you feel every time on her birthday? Um, it's so sad because at the time I gave birth to her, there were a whole lot of pain I went through. And then I gave birth to her alone, me and alone in the hospital. Mm. Yes. He was not around. He was not around. Nobody was around. It's just you. It was me alone because I went to the hospital and then he said he was going to come. He didn't come. But he was in town? He was in town. He was in Ghana? Yeah. He later came in the evening after I had finished putting to bed mm -hmm. and then I have my baby. That was when he came. Mm -hmm. But in all, all I wanted was to see my family happy, mm -hmm. to see him happy, to see my girl happy, to, at least for my child to have a dad with her. So... Were you properly a, married? Yeah, we were properly married under the Islamic law. Under the Islamic law. So it was registered? Yes. Everything? Yes. What do you think went wrong? Mm. Um, to me, I think because we didn't work the equation properly. Mm. Because marriage to me, I see it to be a sacred union between two matured people who are ready. It's either he's not ready or I wasn't ready. To me, that's what I'll say. Went wrong. Maybe he, we, re, we later find out that he's not the right man or she's not the right lady for me. We didn't just work the equations right. Do you think you were ready? Um, I was ready because so many times I have to look up to like, okay, because I sacrificed my education. So I you stopped schooling? Yeah, to I get married. Yeah, I completed secondary school when I met him. With okay. a promise he was going to get me back to school. Okay. So there was no need for me to go back to school. Well, because I got admission to Garden City University. Okay. And he said, no, you don't have to go to school here. Once we get married and I take you abroad, it's easy for you to start schooling over there. Okay. So I accepted naively. Okay. I accepted that. Yeah. Were you excited with the idea of going to live abroad? I was so happy. Not even there abroad. The fact I was married... Mm. Um, I'll be having my freedom because I was from strictly a Muslim home where I cannot do a whole lot of things on my own. So I was so happy aside abroad and the fallacies I'll be wearing the big laces, the mm. shoes, the ghillies to be dancing. I'm getting okay. married, yeah. We're excited about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Sheikh, <laughs> marriage yeah. as an institution, what is it? Thank you very much. Um, she, she introduced a word which I, I find very relevant uh, and key to the definition of, of marriage in Islam, and she said it's a sacred union. Mm. Um, for us, marriage is a divine institution and also a contract. Mm. So 
if you look at the two, then we say it has an element of contract and also element of sacrament in it. <coughs> the aspect of sacrament brings in God. Mm. And that is where I mentioned last, uh, the last time I was here, right. that it is a covenant, uh, a tripartite covenant at the apex of which God is, and the two be man and a woman <coughs> who are at the base. Mm. Um, <coughs> The, con the, the, the covenant is also between the man and a woman mm. also. And then the vertical side of it is when it is also between God and the mm, two, two of them. So that makes it uh, a divine institution Mission, and right. something that is so pleasing to God. And like, and like I mentioned, um, because it fits squarely into the plan of God for man. Uh, right. Man did plan the, the world of man through the so small social unit we call the family. Right. And we said that, that, that we said that the marriage in itself is one of the processes by which we are able to establish that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the other side, which is contractual, is that it's so contractual because it's, it involves cons con consent right. um, between a, a man and a woman. Oh and, 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 and rightly, when you asked her a question, mm -hmm. you know, as to whether she was ready, in other words, it involves her giving a certain consent right. or somebody making a proposal and her accepting it. That is what brings the contractual aspect of it. And in that right. contract, we say there are two pillars. The pillars is that proposal is made and acceptance is given. Right. Uh -huh. right. Now, once those have been established, then we say that a Muslim marriage has been established as a means of legitimizing relationship or a bond of union between a man and a woman. But this does not offer us happy marriage. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. Let me let me come to Haja <laughs> Hurricane and then I'll come back to you. All these things being done properly according to Islamic laws and maybe the constitution of Ghana and the laws of Ghana does not mean that it will go right. Yes. It doesn't mean it will go right, but it depends on the two of you. Mm. Because I see marriage as a... Marriage actually is like part of our worship mm. to God. Marriage, as was said earlier, is a gift from God on both sides. Either be it an Islamic marriage or Christian marriage, marriage is a, is gift, a gift from, from God. God. But the way you treat the marriage is your gratitude to God. So when you go into marriage, you seeing it that. as a, yeah, the way you the way you treat, you treat that marriage is, is your, your gratitude, gratitude to, to God. God. You know, God has blessed you with a marriage. How are you going to treat this marriage? You have to give it your all and all. Once you see it as a gift from God, you have to also, you know, like Sheikh said area earlier, you are it's a you agree to be responsible and obliged right. to live as a couple that is in marriage, in that union. So once you are in it, you should give it your all. You should know that uh, I'm obliged to, to treat this man as a husband and make him happy because that is your home. And you say, even if you are working, you spend more time in your home. So yesterday night, I was trying to calculate right. the number of hours we spend at home and the number of hours we spend in our offices. Okay. We spend about uh, 12 hours at home, where uh, I mean, a day. Mm. Whereas we spend eight hours in the office. So you should make your home a peaceful and comfortable place for both you and your husband. I know this is a women's program, but from the way you were talking, it looks like the greater responsibility is on the woman. Uh, I wouldn't say so. Mm. It's, all, it's from both sides. Okay. Yes. The woman is to make it a home, all right, to keep the home. But if the man doesn't perform his duty as a man by taking care of you, by providing what he has to produce, uh, to provide, then you will not be able to do all the things you are supposed to do as a woman. And so you also reciprocate that by making the home a home, uh, I mean, a comfortable place for the man. So it's both sides. Right. I see it as 50-50. It's both sides. Shake. Is it 50-50? Well, in, in modern times, if you take the realities of our modern times, I mean, she's saying the truth. I mean, yeah. it's 50-50. But coming, technically speaking, in Islam, um, the man has a duty. In fact, he provides for the woman's feeding. He provides for her shelter. He provides for her clothing. 
In fact, he provides for everything that means to her her happiness and the harmony of her heart. Um, that's then because the Islam sees the woman as the cornerstone of the happiness of the family. Mm. In other words, remove the woman from the family and the family is not happy. Okay. And so when the prophet speaks, he, he says that, look, the whole life in this, in this world is, is, joy, is joyous, but the best of the joys of the world is a, 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 a pious woman. That's the way he puts it. A pious, a pious woman. That's why I said that those prerequisites that we mentioned, mm. uh, these are preconditions to validate marriage. But they did not translate into the happiness of the marriage. marriage. So there are things, like she said, that you must do. Yeah. And that is where the understanding of the fact that in marriage, that's what we say, it's a union, it's a, right. it's a fusion. That is based so much on certain attributes of the relationship. And one of them is love, compassion, mm. trust, care, sympathy. And all those, these things must be shared. And I like the proposition I used the last time in Quran chapter 30, mm. verse 2021, 20, yeah. which says that it's part of the science of God's mercy for you, that he provided for you life mates, that you will dwell with them in tranquility. See. And he put between you, and I like the word between. Mm. The moment we mention between, in my understanding, there's two. Two extremes, Trip, something in between. between. So one has been fixed in between. It means it represents mutuality. Right. And so it's a, it's a union in which there is mutual respect, mutual recognition, mutual concern, and so on and so forth. And so if the man and the woman can understand this and also see the God in that relationship, they will be able to work out their ego. And of late, I have been worried of late in Muslim marriages that, that, that have not been stable. Mm -hmm. And my worry is even young, I call young Muslim elite couples mm. are unable to stay in marriage. And as I observe and study very well, their problem is they are the clutch of their egos. Mm. Well, I mean, the man is a medical doctor and the, and the woman has a, a master's mm -hmm. probably in, in communication. Right. Uh, so, so, so <laughs> Some people have masters in communication here. They are smiling. <laughs> you see? Uh -huh. So instead of their education, mm, the height of their education to bring some value to bear and to add value to their bond so they can feel happy. No, they have a clash. Of egos. Of egos. I know. This one to say I know. Uh, yes. Because if, if two women are, uh, two, a man and a woman are both medical doctors, wow, interesting. It should be a happy, oh. they must have a lot to talk yeah, about yes, and, and discuss, but on the more no work at and that's yes, they, 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 they are unable to stay. So I question what is their problem? Because they have removed the place of God and they are looking at themselves in it. So they have become so materialistic. You're watching the standpoint. The standpoint is sponsored by the Anointed Electrical Engineering Services, the generator experts. Thank you to Access W by Access Bank. Thank you to Tinated Herbal for their Venicare, Tomacare, and Malacare. They sponsor us as well. African Women's Development Fund, AWDF, supporting women's rights organizations across Africa for the past 15 years and over. We are also sponsored by Lip Tomato Paste, Go Tomato, Good Taste. And then Mala 2 and Auntie Mary Gripe Water by NS Chemist. We'll be back. <laughs> Adia meni na so me sa ka mi do o si den wat odo ayo be sima pa o ko so se tinated venike enu ko ni e bibidura clinical no ya testi e wo department of pharmacology and microbiology e wo university of ghana on medical school sa o mu do understand we say say bye mi ya num tinated venike wat hey tinated ambassador aboy e papa Three zero two zero eight one six zero eight zero seven and a zero two seven six eight seven five six two nine. Tina thirteen euro. Aye, we see each other. When it comes to your family. 
10 to the anti-malarial you can trust. Mala 2. Mala 2 is a highly effective artemeter lumefantrine anti-malarial available in syrup and tablets, specially formulated for children and adults. Keep the whole family healthy with Mala 2. There is this new generator set we would like to introduce to you in this era of power outages. I hope this time around you're going to give us something better. Yes. Let's go out and have a test run. Hey, you call this box a generator? Get a quality one from Anointed Electrical Engineering Services. Come to Anointed Electrical Engineering Services for a permanent solution to your power problems. We do 24-7 after sales service, sales of spare parts for all generators and cables, and we repair all generators even if you didn't buy from us. Locate our head office at number 77 Anointed House off of Dokkal Malam Main Road. Anointed, the generator experts. The things you do for me it's a new beginning and a new dawn. The stamp point, eight years of impacting women and society by the grace of God. The Muslim Women's Conference on the 16th of July at the forecourt of GDA Studios, 9 a.m. prompt under the theme, The Muslim Woman, Promoting Peace and Development. The speakers are Hajia Alima Mahama, former Minister, Women and Children Affairs, and former MP, Nalerugu Gambaga, Hajia Saada Meida, Commissioner at the Electoral Commission of Ghana, Hajia Ramat Muslim, former National President, President Ahmadiyya Muslim Women's Association. Come deliberate with Muslim women and men across the country. And finally, get your sports gear ready for the 8th Femithan, a walk for peace on the 23rd of July. Venue, Elwak Sports Stadium, Accra. Time, 6 a.m. There will be fun games, cooking competition, and so much more. Sponsored by, supported by, media partners. The standpoint at 8, woman, arise and shine. Your new dawn is here. Standpoint. Welcome, welcome back. We are also supported by Matamis, who gave us the port and awake purified water um, by Casa Preco Company Limited. Any bottle of awake purified water you buy, they contribute one Ghana peso to the National Cardiothoracic Fund. Thank you to Gogot Yogurt and Pilko Fruit Juices. Sadia, do you think you understood the institution of marriage before you went into it? At the time I married, no. Do you think anybody prepared you for marriage? Nobody prepared me. And do you think young ladies of today, people, they, they get prepared for marriage? They are not prepared. Most of them are not prepared. Most people are getting married these days because this one is married, I have to get married. The pressure is getting too much. I can start, I was with these people. See, Kande is married, Adiza is married, Lami is married. Why me? What am I still doing at home? Do you love your husband? Now? <laughs> That's a smart girl. I want her to trick her. I want her to trick her. <laughs> this is not a political question. <laughs> okay, did, do you love your husband? <laughs> <laughs> what will I Honest, say? Honest, did you love At him? the time I married. At the time you married him. I didn't know. I, I don't know, know whether I loved him or not. I don't know. Are you saying this because you are angry? No. <laughs> From my heart. Mm. At the yeah, time no. I married, I didn't know I loved him or not. But Until what made I you had say, my child. Okay. But when you had your child, did you love him? Did yes. you fall in love with him? Yes. Hadia. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been married? Um I don't want to go into that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I've had two marriages and I don't want to okay, talk about okay, my previous okay. marriage. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so you were in a marriage and I then was you can. in came... a marriage before. That's why I told you that the fact that you have gone through all the necessary rights to get married right. does not guarantee okay. your marriage will succeed. Okay. Unless you are both committed to the marriage okay. and you see it as 
a gift from Allah. Okay, then yes. you are somebody who admit that sometimes we do make mistakes in the choices that we make. Oh, yes, we do. We do. We do make mistakes. Mm. We do make mistakes in the choice of men. We, I think the age also, your age, mm. because when you are the younger you are, the more likely you are to make mistakes. Right. Because there are certain indicators you don't look at. Right. But as you grow, you begin to see them and you ask yourself, why didn't I see this? Yeah. And now you tend to advise people right. that, look, when you see these indicators, it's a no-no. Okay. I mean, it's a no-go area. Okay. Don't. Okay. And then also, um, sometimes the societal pressure, mm. the pressure for you to get married. So it's like, okay, this person is in love with me. Mm. Let me just marry him. Okay. To please my parents, parents and to please my friends. Because, you know, I always say that, look, if you are going to put pressure on either of the sexes to mm. get married, then it is a man. Because it's the man who proposes. Right. The woman in an African setup, the woman cannot propose, propose. to a man. Right. And there are no men in the shop for you to go and pick. Pick. <laughs> your specification Casey, yeah did you go through the pressure yourself i did i married very late okay i married when Even i was the over 30 years yes okay wow then you fought late. hard so in my case it wasn't a matter of choice but it was just the pressure sure. and so when i came out of that i refused to allow any pressure to get me into marriage really? i remember my mom coming all the way from the north Mm. after the first marriage to tell me she had only come to advise me to marry and i asked her if she had forgotten what i went through before right. so that was the last time she ever put pressure on me to marry right. she had so soon forgotten mm. so for you see is the society right. because before your parents also begin to put pressure on you to get married right. it's because of what they hear from outside okay people see them and ask them what their children are doing at home, home. yeah yeah I'm sorry to say that I don't read relationship books. In white. Mm. Because every human being is unique. Right. What might fit for Sheikh, Sheikh. might not fit my husband. Exactly. Even for twins. Yeah. So you have to study the person and know how to deal with him. Mm. serious young ladies who are really learning in the old days. Okay, that's good. So you need to study and don't yes. compare your marriage. At all, at all. Some men are not extroverts. They are not the outgoing types. Right. In fact, my husband, if you give him a birthday card, it may take... If he opens it, he won't even read what is in it. But that doesn't make him unromantic. Right. Thank you to GTP for my clothes. Chic by Siba for sewing this for me. My hair is by Shukla Hair. Thank you to Power Cosmetics for the makeup. And makeup and more applied and makeup for us. We'll be back. <laughs>. I'm a W Young Professional. My name is Benedessa. I'm a W in business. Hi, I'm AC and I'm proud to represent the W and family. I have access to the best sources of inspiration, an outstanding mentor, career workshops and more. I am connected to a panel of professional advisors. I even got a new business partner through a W seminar. Being a working mother is amazing and W empowers us with special lifestyle offers, an early saver for the kids and bank assurance protection for the whole family. Sign on to W at any Access Bank branch near you. Get inspired. Get connected. Get empowered. W. Inspiring. Connecting. Empowering. The things you do for me. Nobody. It's a new beginning and a new dawn. The standpoint Eight years of impacting women and society by the grace of God. The Muslim Women's Conference on the 16th of July at the forecourt of GDA Studios, 9 a.m. prompt under the theme, The Muslim Woman, Promoting Peace and Development. The speakers are Hajia Alima Mahama, former Minister, Women and Children Affairs, and former MP, Nalerugu Gambaga, Hajia Saada Meida, Commissioner at the Electoral Commission of Ghana, Hajia Ramat Muslim, former National President, Ahmadiyya Muslim Women's Association. Come deliver with Muslim women and men across the country sponsored by supported by media partners 
The stamp point at 8, woman, arise and shine. Your new dawn is here. Limbo! Limbo! Hey, hi. Huh. One time. Maybe I invite you for dinner. L-E-A-P. Lip tomato paste. Four. What else is that? Honey. When it's a little tomato paste, it's a good idea. It's so good. Yeah, ma. Oh, my. Don't want to say hi. Mmm, madam. The food tastes very good. What's the secret? L-E-A-P. Lip. Yeah. Lip tomato paste. Emma, I don't need that, papa. Lip! <laughs> For bulk purchase, contact 050-140-1088. I'm a mother and take so much delight in seeing that my kids are healthy. Want to know my secret? It's Kidix Syrup. It's a multivitamin syrup full of vitamins and minerals which boost their immune system and increase their appetite for food. Kidix Syrup is recommended for children between 6 months to 12 years. It's available at Oson's Chemist, Lancer Chemist and all pharmaceutical shops throughout the country. Jukat Pharmacy located in Kaswa is the sole distributor for Kidix Syrup. For bulk purchase, please call 0244-560-296. Kidix Syrup, the perfect growth and appetite tonic for children. Hush, my little baby. For babies, tummy pains, minor digestive upsets, or teething. Hearing mothers everywhere use Auntie Mary's baby gripe mixture. It's quick, effective, and sure to leave babies smiling again in no time. Auntie Mary's baby gripe mixture from Ennis Chemist. Because everyone needs a chemist. Standpoint, we are sponsored by Anointed Electrical Engineering Services, the Generator Expert, Auntie Mary Gripe Water, and Malatu by Ernest Chemist, Tinatet Malacare, Venicare, and Tomacare by Tinatet Herbal, Access W by Access Bank, and Live Tomato Paste, Good Tomato, Good Taste, and then African Women's Development Fund, AWDF. They also support us. Let me go to the audience. Think some few ladies have questions. Who do I start with? Let me start with you. Oh, push you into marriage again. Um, how did you lose your child? <clears throat> I was touched by Alime's story. I once saw her on Facebook. I envied her so much. I wanted to get married just to react like her. I saw her carrying this baby. Okay. Even before the marriage. Yeah, she was a okay. friend to me, but we lost contact. Contact, okay. I'm touched by her story, but my question is, me to me, I think some of the problems with marriage is our in-laws. So, Sadia, let's start with you. First of all, what will make you get married again? But you will get married again, right? Yes. Right now, at my age, mm -hmm. when I'm going into marriage, I know why I have to get married. Okay. At least one, for the fear of God. Okay. Two, to complete my religious obligation. Okay. And three, yeah. to know that no matter what I would do into the marriage, mm -hmm. I would one day be questioned about the marriage. Okay. Yes. And the other lady, she didn't watch the standpoint the last time, so she's asking how you <laughs> you lost your daughter. Okay. Um, the marriage was still in existence when the girl was taken from me. Okay. But um, at the end, I've come to draw a conclusion that all that he wanted was a child in Africa. Maybe to bear his name or something. I didn't know. Okay. Because that's what I've come to draw the conclusion. Because, because he had other children. Yeah, he had he other children outside over. Yeah, outside. Okay. okay. Immediately he picked the girl. Everything changed. Immediately the girl left. Everything changed. So we come to, I think, Haja, you take it. Sheikh, we'll give you the last sermon. <laughs> He's talking about in-laws. You see, it's all... Sometimes in-laws in interfering. Yeah it all boils down to the understanding between the two of you. Mm. It only escalates or worsens when the man doesn't seem to support you. To support you does not mean to do that openly. Right. But maybe behind closed doors, 
he tries to empathize with you. He tries to, he makes you happy. You know, sometimes you see some people in a marriage and you wonder what is keeping them in the marriage. Mm -hmm. But you don't know what the husband whispers to her in the room. Right. Do you understand? Yeah. He or she comes out in the compound. You see his life or her life to be horrible. But then the husband gives her all the comfort and all the support that she gets. Right. But it is when the man doesn't seem to understand your plight that things go way high. But so it all depends on the two of you right. again, once again, right. the man. So don't you blame know, your in laws too blame, much. Don't blame, blame your, your husband. It is the man. He has yeah. to be his man. If he cannot even face them, then he should do it with you. That is to tell you that, look, I understand. Let us work as to all say, when we are able to put up our own place, we will go. It's a matter of time. And that will keep you going. It will give you all the patience yeah. to wait till you, the two of you are alone together. Right. But it is when the man is not helpful that it doesn't help matters. Sheikh, we all do agree that marriages are not going the way we yeah. wish it to go. Yeah. How can we turn things around? I think there must be a lot of education. And... Uh, we must also depart from certain traditional way of, of doing things. Right. Culture has established certain things. Um, I told somebody that, look, if you are married to a Muslim woman who is a lawyer, <laughs> don't <coughs> expect her to behave like my great-great-grandmother. Mm. Because it will not work. Yeah. The other issue also um, is that there's a, there, there's a gap in our system. Right. And it keeps on coming up. And that is, in the Muslim community, the practice of marriage counseling is absent. I was coming to that. Even if there is, it is not well grounded. Right. Sometimes you find the one who even established the office, what kind of training did he go through? Mm. How experienced is he? he? Does he understand the intricacies of such marital relationships? How it is restored to harmony? And what are the factors that destabilizes? I mean, right. those things are not there. That's Once, a post-marriage counseling. Yeah, and post-marriage. I think it's, it's more important it's, than even I mean, the pre... Yeah. Seriously, yeah. We, need, we need that one a lot. I mean, even changes. The woman is growing. Mm. The man is also growing. Um, their likes and dislikes are changing. What okay. excited them some time ago now is no more exciting. Right. Yeah. So how do they continue to understand themselves and to be able to move, move along? Okay. Some of them are matters of practical experience. Right. You may not necessarily have to read a specific scripture to be able to, to understand it. But as you go along, mm. provided you share common love. Right. And I always say that where there is love, there is no hate. Right. Where there is love, there is care. Where there is love, there is attention. Okay. Where there is love, there is trust. Amen. Where there is love, there is sympathy. Right. You see, so, so love begets so many other, other attributes yes. that if you can give expression to them, even in spite of some occasional disagreements, you are able to know how to meander your way through and still be seen as people who are happy even though you are having your own, own, your challenges, own, your own yeah. challenges. But in marriages where women are subjected to disrespect and abuse, abuse and being beaten up, and it is not correct by the Islamic standard. God, the Holy Quran summarizes all this by saying that and consort with them on grounds of love and compassion. That's, that's the description. Describing everything that will make the woman happy in the marital home. He said, and consort with them on the basis of that which is equitable and righteous. Um, when, when my wife travels and, and I get into the kitchen, I get confused. <laughs> Sometimes I just want a teacup. Okay. Uh, and I'm unable to find it. Then I realize that somebody is absent. <laughs> <laughs> if we understand that marriage is a devotional life, <laughs> it's a devotional life. And yeah. once it's somebody, something that is pleasing to God and God wants it, yeah. and if both parties come into the marriage with that mindset, yeah. I'm sure that they will be able to go through, yeah. uh, through it with, yeah. that, with least diffi difficulties. difficulties. And I think the education for me is, <sighs> is much, much, much important. Amen to that.
to you, Western, I, I guess. <laughs> Thank you very much. But uh, Sadia, yeah. we wish you the best and we'll continue to pray that um, you, you get access to because children are gifted. And I can imagine as a mother, you know, four years you haven't spoken to your daughter. It must be very, very painful. You know, I, I can only imagine, you know, how it will be. Shake. Yeah. And then finally. I think finally I, I want to use this opportunity to advise uh, men who are married to more than one wife. Mm -hmm. The Holy Prophet told us that any man who gets married to two wives, three or four, and he does not deal justly among them, he will be resurrected on the day of judgment, half of his body paralyzed. Ooh, that's dangerous. That is a statement made by, made by the Prophet. It tells the extreme mm -hmm. to which this issue is seen as so so important because the prophet himself was polygynous and so therefore in his life was an example for mm. us and i think that i use this voice now to talk to tell to mm. men who intend to go in for additional wives yeah. to think twice but those who are in it they must correct the way they are yeah, dealing they know, but yeah. women are not something to, 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 to joke with thank you very mm. much that is awesome. We of the standpoint this year, our theme is the responsible woman. So it's introspection. You taking responsibility for your actions. Who are you? What do you have? Are you ready for the marriage? When you go in there, what are you taking with you? Can the man benefit from you? Is it from your cooking? Is it from your wisdom? Is it from your, uh, your intelligence? Is it from your connections? What have you got to make that marriage work? Of course, this is not to exonerate the man. I'm saying this based on the premise that you know the kind of man you're going to marry. I always say that as a woman, or I believe, you should marry when you are ready, not because the man is ready. Not because the man is ready, because if the man is ready, he has everything, and you are not ready, you don't have what it takes. What are you going, you are going there to cause trouble. And you will not be happy. Because really, if you don't know the worth of this tablet, and we don't know its use, then it's given to you, you misuse it you will misuse it so my prayer and my plea is that let us go back to the basics from what i hear today the quran is a beautiful book it has all it takes in there it gives a beautiful place to women and marriage marriage can be beautiful it's not a perfect institution but it can be a happy one it can be a beautiful one. Let us get it right. Young ladies of today, my Muslim daughters, I know they don't want to be seconded and all that. They want to be the only one. Yes. Did you hear that? They want to be the only one. Yes. Okay, so what have you got? Are you adding value to yourself? Who are you as a woman? Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.